Good morning. Is everyone suitably caffeinated? Awesome. Okay. Well, um, it's very exciting to be here today at Velocity in front of a, a pretty imposing room of people, you'll have to admit. Um, today, I want to start us off by kind of bringing you on a journey, starting your journey towards security. And I'm going to do that by maybe challenging a bit of the way you were brought up, a bit of the way you think, and encouraging you to do some maybe bad things. Now, I'm a good person. Please bear in mind, I'm a good person. Um, if you do like the Twitters, please do tweet along. There's a little hashtag. If you have any questions, I obviously won't be able to do them up here. But if you use Twitter and the hashtag, I will find you, and I will give you little witty answers on the Twitters. Uh, those playing along at home can join in too. So, my lawyer is very specific when I do these kind of talks. Um, it's illegal for me to encourage you to do crime, so please do not do crime. Um, do not encourage others to do crime. Um, New Zealand's quite relaxed on law, America not so much. So, I don't know your laws, just don't do it. You have way more than I'm used to. So, why are we here? We're here because you build amazing things, like this wooden box, right? Your applications and systems are like this artisan prime wooden box, lovingly handcrafted from high-quality materials, keeping your possessions safe in a challenging world. Except the reality is that we built an amazing thing because we had a great idea. We built it out of technologies we found on the internet that we kind of strung together in the way that best suited us, that best met our abilities at the time. So our artisan box behind the covers might be a little bit more homebrew than we might be used to. And then what do we do with this box, with our applications, with our systems? We fill them with precious things. Now, this is a kitten. Please don't put kittens in boxes. That's the bad plan. I've been told I've not, I'm to make that clear, too. But what kind of precious things do we put into our applications? We put our data into them. We put other people's data into them because they give us their data. We put other people's data in that they don't know they're giving us because we aggregate things together, we measure things. And we put this into our lovingly handcrafted artisan box. And we say we're going to keep it safe. And then we put it on the internet. Good plan. This is the equivalent of putting a $3 padlock on your artisan box. And we put it out there, and we hope the world will play nicely with it, that they won't try and get to our precious things. But mostly, this just makes us sad at the end of the day, because there are people out there who think differently to us, who behave differently, who have tools and technologies we're not used to. And they do bad things to our box to our application. They break it. They destroy it. They steal our precious things. They steal other people's precious things, and then we end up in the news, and not because we did something cool, but because one time, just one time, something went wrong. This is a talk about self-defense. I want you to be the new champions of security for your organization. The days have gone where you can have one person or a group of people who are your security champions, and it's their job. Sorry to say it, every last one of you here in the room and at home is now responsible for the security of your systems and your application. And if you don't like it, I feel sad for you, but I don't really care. You see, we all think we're really good people. This is my self-portrait. I've been professionally employed to do bad things to nice people for 10 years. I want you to see yourself differently. I don't want you to see yourself just as the moral citizen that sat here today. I want to see you as someone who understands the bad parts of the world and can protect yourself. It's not a picture of an angel, it's a picture of a warrior. Because, you see, we're all liars and cheats and thieves. Isn't that wonderful? How many of you have lied so far today? Awesome. How many of you have stolen anything in the last three months? Again, don't do crime. Yeah? How many of you maybe pirated media? It's okay, don't worry. They're not watching you, they're just watching me. You know, you can, you can say yes. Turns out, we are all doing bad things on a fairly regular basis because it turns out we don't think anyone's getting hurt. 
we have a moral code in which we say, oh, as long as no one's getting hurt, I'm all right doing this. I can tell a white lie. I can steal the last cookie and say that it was someone else. I can cross where I'm not supposed to. We do these things all of the time. The difference between us and criminals and people who are attacking us is our intentions, not our actions. We do the same actions. We just don't want to inflict pain on others. We don't want to steal from other people. We don't want to cause harm. So if we can mentally realize that our actions and intentions are separate and we can understand actions without becoming psychopaths, then we're going to be good. We can actually learn to defend ourselves way better by exploring some of these actions. So why is this hard, right? Because if this was super easy, you'd already be doing it. And trust me, I work with enough organizations from banks to telcos in a number of countries. And this is hard. There's a reason why these data breaches are happening. There's a reason why security is on the list of scary things we don't touch. It's because we're engineers. So I'm part software developer, part penetration tester, part, oh, God knows what. But we love puzzles. We are engineers. We build things. The act of destructive things, like breaking into systems, is a really negative process. We do not create beautiful things in the world. We would destroy other people's masterpieces. So as engineers, we try and shy away from destructive things, and we build wonderful things instead. Asking you to do this is going against your nature as engineers. But I want you to realize that and push on anyway. We also feel cheated if attacks against us aren't sophisticated or elegant. I want you to mentally picture your house right now. OK? You know, doors and windows and things. OK, now don't say that loud, because you know, room full of strangers. But how would you break into your house? How would you steal from you? Now, it sounds like a bit of a crude question, right? But many of us, when we start really thinking about doing crime against ourselves, we plan a Hollywood heist. You know, we've got someone with the wheels, and we've got the person who can make gadgets, and we've got the really charismatic person. You know, we've watched enough Hollywood now that we kind of, we've got this kind of love affair with these big, sophisticated, elegant attacks. It's why we latch onto the idea of cyber so much. How many of you think cyber is coming to get you this year? Yeah? OK, cyber isn't coming to get you, just for the record. You can go back and tell your bosses that. Lots of things are coming to get you, but cyber's not one of them. So we feel cheated when our attacks in real life don't match this Hollywood ideal, when we don't have this big orchestrated plan that is done by professionals. I've only ever been robbed once in my life, and it was by a 10-year-old on a BMX. There is nothing sophisticated or elegant about that attack, and it was horribly frustrating. So we need to get past the idea that the attacks against our systems and our organizations and our applications are going to be sophisticated. They're most likely to attack things like passwords, because passwords are controlled by humans, and humans are wonderful things, that we're not good at passwords. Um, they're going to go against the systems that we put on the internet because we wanted to do it quickly and we didn't have time to check the config. They're going to go against our people, actual people in our organizations, nice, well-meaning people, people who just want to help. And these are going to be crude. They are going to be lies. They are not going to be big staged affairs. The most effective attacks going on right now are not sophisticated. They are simple. And we need to get past this love affair with the sophisticated and elegant. So I'm going to give you three steps, just three, that you can go back to your organizations and actually start doing security, every single one of you. And I'm going to set the direction for planning your defenses, and we're going to do that by thinking like bad people. The first thing that I want you to do is stop thinking like a villain. Every organization has a group of people or individuals that will, if given the opportunity, do bad things or silly things. Let's face it, sometimes malicious and kind of silly are in the same bucket. And the key to this is being objective and thinking about the objective. Because believe it or not, it's rarely about your technology. Hackers, and I horribly misuse the term, sorry for software engineers who like the word as a tinkerer kind of sense, uh, attackers on the internet, they don't care whether you're using microservices or that your REST API is super awesome and that Lambda's going to change the world. 
They don't care that Docker is your container of choice, and they don't care how many hours you spent massaging your AWS system into existence. They're not here for your technology. They're here for your precious things. They are not here for the box. They are here for the kitten. Protect the kitten. So why are they here? Well, it turns out there's a whole reason, a uh, raft of reasons why they're here. And it's all going to be different based on your organization. So they could be here for financial, you know, good old fashioned, directly steal money. How many of you work in payment systems or banks or that kind of thing? Yeah, a fair number. Yeah, money's a pretty clear objective. I like money, money's good. And if they're not stealing money directly, how many of you employ people? Yeah, I'm assuming many of you are paid to work. That's, you know, good. So we can gain money by other things. We can do extortion. We can blackmail people. We can steal things and sell them for money, including assets, not just digital things, assets. So what about political? Well, it turns out politics is a bit of a, a you know, tricky area. We're not going to go deep into it. But anything you believe, there will be someone in this room who firmly opposes every single thing you think is right in the world. Just in this room. I challenge you to find them by the end of the conference because you have the best conversations with those people. So people will attack your organization just because they disagree with your fundamentals, or those of your organization, or those that are perceived of your organization. It doesn't matter what your company actually does. It matters what the world thinks they do. Anyone from Palantir here? Right. Egotistical. How many of you think you're better than someone else in the world? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty kick-ass at wearing this dress right now. Yeah. OK, so ego is massive. We are humans. We have egos. We are in DevOps. If you listen to the rest of the tech community, we have pretty well-evolved egos. Um, lots of people do things just to prove that they are good. A lot of crime is committed just to prove they can do it. And personal, people you fired, people who you turned down for a job interview, people who left your organization two years ago and you forgot to take away their accounts. Uh, all sounds really comical, and huh, nobody would ever do that, but really, really, they do. So we've decided, we focus, we know what is interesting about our organization, why someone is going to attack, and what they're going to try and steal. We need to create a safe place to do this in. We can't just start doing bad things to our systems on our live systems, it turns out. Not a good plan. But we need a safe place to create some chaos. Chaos is really important. We've now actually created very fast deployment chains, which mean that you know, breaking the build is a big thing. Things go red. Things stop. If you're in a really irritating office, noises happen. Um, so don't do this on your live systems. People will stop you. But create a safe place to do destructive security play. If you think you've got a gut feeling that you could totally steal something doing this, this that, and the other, find a place to try it out. If you think your process has a bit of a loophole that you think is a bit cute and funny, go and play. And if you're not sure where to look for those, go and find your frontline staff, because they will definitely know where these places are. And you need this space. You need it to be creative. It's really, really hard when you start breaking things for a living to know where to begin. If you see an interface with 20 buttons on, you kind of, you know, it can be kind of daunting. So find a space where you can, without restriction and without fear, break things. Well, that's OK. And then I want you to stop being afraid of playing with your technology for security's sake. I want you to forget every rule, every system diagram, every bit of instructional material your organization has ever written. Because they're not right. They tell you what you think your system should do, not what your system really does when you start you know, being a little bit mischievous with it. So I have a two-year-old girl, um, and she's really awesome. But she has taught me some very strong lessons in why it's important we um, forget about the rules. Because it programs us, you see. When we, we are built into a society of rules, it pro programs us to stop thinking about how people might do us harm. So how many of you watch the conversation and kind of see if this is familiar? So I'll tell her, please don't touch that, because we're in a department store, and there's a giant stack of glassware that's worth more than I earn in a month. And then I reason. I say, no, Daddy will be cross. There's a threat. Whenever we teach something, there's normally a threat. What will go wrong? 
Then I reinforce this. I say, I mean it. I use my serious voice, which is not too different to my regular. And then I'm running out of options, because once you've taught someone and you've reinforced it, you're going to actually have to follow through with something here. So I start to count. One. She's still doing it. Two. Oh, Christ, she's still doing it. And she doesn't do fractions. She's two. Um, I'm going to have to do something here. Ah, three. Okay, yeah. And we've got broken glassware. But as we get older, a two-year-old, they don't understand these rule systems. They're wonderful. If you want to learn how to break things, find a two-year-old. But we're grown-ups now. We've had decades of conditioning that mean that if somebody says, don't break that, we will try very, very hard not to break that. We do not touch. We do not cross the velvet line. This fear, this fear of breaking things, stops us from learning how our applications actually behave. So I want you to kind of, every time you think, no, I shouldn't break this, I want you to take a breath and go, it's okay. It's okay to break it. These rules that we've grown up in, these moral systems, the laws, these ethics, all influence our behaviors and expectations. How many of you have stood in a line and watched somebody cut in front of you and been generally peed off at this? This has been awful. You know, somebody has had the old, they've walked in front of you, they've broken the system. They just play by different rules to you. Security people play by different rules to engineers. And this is how you have to start thinking. You have to think more like the person who cuts into the line than the person who's waiting patiently and doing what they're supposed to. So there's a TLDR, because seriously, internet age. But, so I want you to think like a villain, and I want to figure out what's of value in your organization, because it's different for each of you. Those of you who run tools that aggregate other people's data, you will be aware of this. You, can, you protect many people's crown jewels. I want to create spaces where we can do creative chaos. I want you to be able to break things and try, every single one of you, not just specialists you call in once a month. And I want you to play like you read, never read the rule book. And I wanted you to start this today. Now, my challenge that I leave with is I want you to look at your organizations or the applications that you're seeing in this conference today, and I want you to mentally plan, how would I steal from that? What would I steal? What would be valuable? And how can I get away with it without getting caught? Please don't do crime. <laughs> because it's really important. We start this now, and we do it every single day for the rest of our engineering careers. Because every time we see this, it's an opportunity to plan our defenses. It's an opportunity to spot what needs protecting, and it's an opportunity to do good defensive security. <laughs> uh, my slides will be available via the internet. Please follow the Twitters. I apologize for the strange S. Um, if you have any questions, please use the hashtag betteroffbad. Um, I've been Laura Vell. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.